everybody. Welcome to Flower School Live on Wednesday, November 11th, 2020. My name is Michelle Hedrick, AIFD. I'm the lead instructor here. And first off, I'd like to say happy Veterans Day to everybody and happy Armistice Day to those of us not in the United States. Please do your part and thank a veteran for their service today. We wouldn't be here without them. So today I have, I think, a fun topic. It's Thanksgiving. It's everybody's second favorite holiday, first favorite first. holiday, first, yeah. I'm with Marisa because it's about food and family and friends, at least at our house it is. But uh, before we get too far into that, if you're a tulip, go ahead and put your tulip in there. Love to see you. Tell us where you're from. Where, where are you today? What time is it where you are? because sometimes you people are going to bed and sometimes you people are getting up and sometimes it's three o'clock in Portland, Oregon. So tell us where you are, tell us you're a tulip. And if you're new, if you've never joined us for a live before, either on Facebook or on YouTube, please let us know. Let the Tulip Tribe welcome you and let us say hi to you. Leanne's going to be monitoring YouTube so she, along with um, Susie, will be saying hi and greeting you all. And then on Facebook, you'll be chatting with Caledonia and Marisa. So the little voices you hear in the background are Leanne and Marisa. Hey and, <laughs> and the other voices you might hear are the students in our advanced class. They're on their third day and they're working on advanced sympathy designs today. So I'm kind of excited to see what they get done when we get out of the live. Anybody popping on and saying hi yet? They're coming in here. I see so far Scott, Michael, Sharon, uh, Lisa, and at 6 p.m. where she is, Kim nice. and Beatrice. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you all. Thank you all for taking time to join us. Uh, so Thanksgiving, probably my first favorite holiday as an adult, as a child, is probably Christmas because, hey, I'm an only and there were lots of presents. What can I say? Uh, but as an adult, when I got out of college, this was the holiday that I got to do that I was able to host. And we always had 10, 12, 15 people. I'd drag home old college roommates or people I found on the street, didn't really matter. My family's small, but my circle of friends was really large and Thanksgiving is when they all got together. So today, I need your help. Hold that thought. So YouTube is building up. They're getting crazy. They want to see what cool stuff you have. Awesome. Well, we always host, like I said, 10 to 12 people at Thanksgiving. And I usually have two color schemes that I play with. One one year and then one the next year. So one is more a traditional fall palette. Browns and golds and rusts and purple. So there's a little kicker. Lots of sparkly, lots of red more traditional. And then the other is a little more contemporary. I've got purples and greens and orange, still gold, but a little more updated. So tell me, which one do you guys like? And I'll let you pick my Thanksgiving table, and then I'm going to base some of my flower choices on what you pick. How lucky are you guys? My husband doesn't even get to pick what's on the table. Anything shaking out there, Marisa? So a few more tulips I see here. Oh, another one popped in. Let me write their name down. Um, I have Stella, Susie, Tammy, Debbie, Robin, Alex, Arthur, and Julie. And then, oh, and then Gayla just popped in. Hi, and, Gayla. Sorry, I missed you on Saturday. <laughs> and uh, we have Robin from New York, and it's her first time joining us. Robin, welcome. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for popping in and saying hi. We love when new people join us. Um, tell us how you heard about us. Did you just search the web and find us? Or did you have a friend that said, hey, you need to check out the live with the Flower School in Portland? So I have three designs for you today. One, the first design, I'm gonna call it my Zoom backdrop. Since we can't have a big group of people for Thanksgiving, I'm organizing a, um, a Zoom social hour or social 40 minutes, <laughs> if you will, with all the people who have ever come to Thanksgiving, family, friends, whatever, because some have moved. So they can still join us, even just to have a little nibble and a glass of wine 
in their own safe environment, and we're going to do the same. But it's kind of hard to do that computer, iPad, phone thing, and still have something pretty in your backdrop or your foreground. So I thought, okay, where am I gonna do this in my house? Where do I have a wall? Hmm, picture, picture reflection, don't wanna do that. Took the picture down, and what I'm going to create is a Dreamcatcher-inspired flower installation that will be the backdrop. So what I have here, I've started it because y'all do not need to see me wrapping wire for 40 minutes. That's how long it took me to get to this point. So what I have is a wire hoop like you see uh, most recently used in some of the wedding designs where the bridal bouquets were designed on a hoop. And I have covered that with the Oasis Rustic Wire. It's um, an eight gauge or a six gauge excuse me, it's an 18 gauge wire that's covered in um, kind of a bark-like raffia material and it is really hard on your hands. That's why I put the gloves on, not because I'm really strange, just leave it at that, uh, but because as you work with it for this amount of time, it really chews your hands up. So what I have done, I put a glue dash on the wire frame itself to get my, my wrapping started. So I would wrap for a little bit, and then I would go all the way across the wreath form to the other side, wrap around two or three times, zig off in another direction, wrap two or three times, zig off in another direction. You, you get what I'm talking about. So it gives me kind of that dream catcher look and feel to it. So I uh, just wanted to finish that up on screen here a little bit. This portion that I have done so far, you can see how much I have left of an entire spool of the barked wire. And it holds, it's 70 feet. So it's going to take just about that whole 70 foot um, amount of wire to finish off this design. So anybody giving some input on the traditional table colors or the more contemporary table colors? Well, YouTube at this point is going for the contemporary. They are loving that. Okay. And um, we have two first timers, just Mo and Sandra are both first timers on YouTube. And Rebecca, one of our advanced online students is multitasking and she's watching you eating dinner and studying for her advanced exam. Wow, okay, you're impressive. Well, welcome to the new people on YouTube. Thank you uh, for joining us. We love it when we have new folks. Uh, Marmac, I know you're on there. Get on there and say hi. Welcome everybody that's new. Um, tulips, make them feel welcome. I think that's probably uh, my favorite part about jumping into the Tulip Tribe group on Facebook is to see how much love is there and how much uplifting of one another is there um it's it's always funny because if i'm looking at it on a wednesday night and i get to work on thursday somebody may have said well here's my submission for the formal linear hope they like it and then boom it's in their submission box in their uh, portfolio for advanced floral design and it's just really rewarding to see all your positive comments and how much you guys really care for each other in there um, i think that was probably leanne's driving force for launching that it's a place for us to gather as flower friends and share our love of flowers so Marisa had to duck out, so we don't know what you or excuse me, what Facebook is thinking. But if it, I can make it up. You want me to pretend? You can, you can do. You're the boss. You can do whatever you want. That's totally fine. YouTube is just coming in almost 100 percent contemporary. I don't think I've seen a single traditional vote. So you're going to have to have a contemporary Thanksgiving. Uh, okay. Wait, I have. Oh oh oh! See oh, you I leave. We thought we were going to sway the vote. <laughs> So you're gonna have you're gonna have to translate these um, can't get good choices, help anymore. But I do see more contemporaries. I have a few. I have about seven contemporary modern. I have about four traditional. Okay. And then I have three green checkers. So I don't know if that was a choice. That's the contemporary. Okay. Yep. And then um, two people said the first one, and one person said the second one. Okay, so two <laughs> people said the. So it sounds like the contemporary is the one that's winning. That's the. Um, 
Winner, 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 chicken dinner. Turkey. That's the more the more purple and chartreuse and gold with, of course, orange, and then uh, metallic gold in it and metallic copper. Um, it's my favorite, so thanks. But I, uh, like I said, my husband never gets to choose. He just gets to eat, and he's happy for that. But um, I thought it would be kind of fun to let you guys pick my Thanksgiving table this year. So you'll see this is not difficult to do, wrapping the bind wire. It just takes a bit of time, and that's why I wanted to get it started. Um, excuse me, it's not bind wire, it's rustic wire. They used to call it barked wire, like bark of a tree, and that always confused me because it wasn't bark. Yes, Marisa? Uh, Molly would like to know how big is your hoop? Oh. I want to say it's a 15 if that was one hanging on the wall. This is the next size up. So, so this 18? is a 8 and 8 or 16. It's about an 18 inch one. And um, I'll hold it up here in just a second. You'll notice that as I worked with it, I compressed it a little bit. So it's not perfectly round. It's just a little more ovoid. Um, and I also misjudged the amount of barked wire that I needed right there. Um, and I did that for a specific reason. I wanted um, it not to be perfectly round. I wanted a little more oval form because you're going to see what I do with it as far as um, the embellishments that I add. And you know what? You've seen me wrap enough of this. So you're just going to pretend that I did not leave the blank spot. OK? Sorry, guys. So now that I have this wrapped, let me move my table runner out of the way. What I want to do is enhance it with a little bit of floral material. Now, if you live in a condo and you don't really have access to your own yard, maybe your neighbor's yard, I don't know, no judgment. Uh, I happen to have a couple different styles of Japanese maple in my yard. So I went out yesterday morning and cut a branch of lace leaf Japanese maple and um, didn't really care whether it dried out or not. I kind of like how it curls and becomes even more lace-like as it dehydrates. So what I want to do with this is attach it to the side of my form. And that's why I wanted it to be a little more ovoid. So to do that, I'm going to use some of the brown bind wire because that's going to blend in the best. Wow, brown bind wire blends the Blended. best. <laughs> Have a little alliteration in there, my goodness. Um, I'm still stuck on ovoid. I've had I know that. Ovoid, oh, okay. That's real word, ovoid. I don't know, it's Michelle speak. <laughs> my husband always says I make words up and I just tell him to Google it. <laughs> so now we're blending brown bind wire on an ovoid. I'm excited about this. <laughs> So if you saw what I did there, to make the little little pieces, I just wrap that bind wire around my hands and then cut it in two places. And that gives me these nice little uniform pieces to work with. And I don't have to keep cutting and stopping and cutting every time. So I'm going to use that bind wire and attach this little branch of lace leaf Japanese maple to the structure that I created with the brown barked wire. <laughs> Let's see how many bees I can work into this today. <laughs> hey Michelle, yeah. um, uh, Carrie wants to know if you could wrap your hoop with brown, excuse me, oh brown, <laughs> no I can't say the bees. <laughs> she wants to know if you could wrap the, the form with brown floral tape and then accent it with barked wire or metallic wire. Oh, absolutely. You absolutely could. Um, underneath this, it's actually spray painted silver. It had been gold and then it was painted silver. Um, the upside, I think, to, to your thought of using the corsage tape or stem wrap tape is it is kind of tacky. So it's going to help that, um, that wire stay in place, that um, just gives it a little extra bite. That with a glue dash every now and then just to keep it from slipping and to maintain the tension should work really well also to keep things in place. So good idea. I always lean to spray paint because it's faster, but it's messy. So I'm going to attach this in a couple more places just to make sure that it's secure. It doesn't have to be moved around a lot. It doesn't have to go anywhere per se, but I don't want it falling down during my my Thanksgiving happy hour Zoom. That wouldn't be very good. That would be bad. That would be very bad. 
All right, so put one more because I want it to follow the curvature of the, the wreath form a little bit. The ovoid? The ovoid shape, yes, correct. Rebecca says she uses Baylor twine to wrap hoops. Baylor twine, okay, yeah, yeah, that would be good. You know, you could use jute, you could use um, a narrow diameter rope. Uh, ooh, actually rope would be really pretty because it's gonna have a lot more texture and be um, bolder. The thing I like about the wire is I can kind of twist it into place and keep it there. Um, but yeah, no, I like your ideas, guys. Keep them coming. So that's my start. Change my balance point a little bit. But that's not fluffy enough for me. And I'm not fluffy, but it's not fluffy enough. So I'm gonna leave that there for a second. But what I want to do is enhance that with some water tubes that I can then tuck a few stems of flowers in. I don't need to make this a super expensive project to make it have high impact. Um, plus, it's not gonna be anything else my family has. So I'll be like, hey, there goes Michelle overachieving again. What'd it be? Ha ha ha. So I just have a clear uh, water tube, not a pick. It doesn't have the pointy end. And then I have some of the Oasis bind wire. I could put a little bit of a glue dash back here to hold it in place, but I'm not necessarily sure I want it to be permanent there. So for now, I'm just going to wrap the bind wire around a couple times to secure it to the top of the water tube and then get in there really tight and twist it around so that it's secure. Marisa, did you have a question or somebody have yeah, input? Yeah, I yeah. do. Um, it is Penny who asks, um, are, are cornucopias even in these days? You know, okay, so I'm gonna give you the answer, my answer to that, and then I'll ask Leanne and Marisa to chime in. Whatever you like is what's in style, bottom line. If you like green and orange and pink on your table for Thanksgiving, you go for it, girl. Um, I think cornucopia are exceptionally traditional and I think they can be done very beautifully um, with minimal uh, floral products sometimes. I mean, I've seen gorgeous ones that have no flowers, but I like it when there's a mixture of fruit and produce and, and flowers and they're really speaking to the bounty of Thanksgiving, kind of the, the behind the scenes portion. What about you gals? Do you, are you fans of cornucopia? You know, I tend to go traditional. Mm -hmm. This year, I don't know. This year is such a strange year. I'm trying to figure out who am I going to be? And how am I going to be? And there was a wonderful thing in here. One woman said that they're making a family plates, Valerie, and going to then take them and pass them out so that everybody can have their traditional family plates even though they're not together. So they're delivering plates of food and she's making flower toppers for each one. Uh, nice! I to steal that idea. There you go. I like that a lot. I like that a whole lot. Huh. I'm going to have to think about that. I know. Well, pretty cool. That is we very cool. We brilliant people here. We really do. Well, it's the Tulip Tribe. Hello. They're super smart. They're hanging out with us today. <laughs> so I've got four done. That's enough to give you the idea. So I'm going to pull this back so I don't knock over the equipment. David will have my head on a spear if I break something in here. So then I attach the bind wire to the tube. Then I'm just going to attach this to the frame and capturing a few places on the, um, the grid, if you will, that I made with the uh, dream catcher portion and secure that. And then I can come in and clip those off. Anybody else new that's joining us for the first time that's chimed in to share? Actually, I want to do a shout out to Ira, who is new to design and has learned so much from our videos. Oh, well, good. Yay, Ira. Thanks for joining us today. Gosh, that's exciting. Um, I have to admit, even before I was teaching here, I watched Leanne's videos and learned tips and tricks and so forth. Uh, teacher Marisa was teaching this morning and I was out working in the, in the warehouse at the same time and, and I said, oh, can I interrupt your class for just a second? And so we were talking about wedding work and I shared just a little something that I knew and, and she's like, well, I didn't know that. 
So the other day she was doing some kind of design and she did something fancy and, and one of the students asked, well, why did you do it that way? And she explained it and I'm like, well, I didn't know that. So we keep learning all the time. Doesn't matter if we're the teacher or not, we're always a student. If you're not growing, you're dying. So uh, it's always nice to continue to add new information into the mix. So any other comments from people out there? Input, etc. I have a question that I have for people, and I'll just kind of throw it out there. This year, with Thanksgiving being so different, how many people are you comfortable in your environment? Because I know in my world, we used to have 25 to 30 people. Right. Not happening. In my world, we're having two. Um, and I'm just kind of curious how people are adapting. Great. Yeah, so tulips, everybody out there, how many people do you feel are comfortable to be with this Thanksgiving. Uh, much like Leanne, uh, it's just going to be my husband and me at the house. I don't count the cats. I probably should, but they don't eat much. So I've attached those four water tubes. And then comes the fun part. So Michelle, yes. question from Victoria, uh -huh. who has seen us before, but this is her first time live. Yes. She has to cover a bigger space and wants to know if you could do a hula hoop and paint it and use that. You betcha, absolutely. And actually that's where I would go to rope to do that because the the size of the hula hoop is much larger and the um, the rustic wire is going to, one, it's going to take you a lot and a long time. So I think if you painted it underneath a brown color and then went with rope over that, it's going to give it a lot more um, bulk and be much more impressive. But absolutely, hula hoop would be great. Marisa, did you have something? Um, Kim wants to know where you get those filler bottles from. Oh, well, uh, I got mine on Amazon from a medical supply place. Uh, Leanne, do you remember where you got the classroom you know, I used it from a school science provider. Oh. Because, you know, in the high schools, they always need things like that. So sure. A, a science class um, company online. Okay. Well, and that's good. Like medical. We use those a lot at the animal hospital. Oh, the animal yeah. hospital, yes. So the nice thing about the water tubes is I don't really need to have majorly long stems. And since you all picked the more contemporary palette, I'm going to work in a little more... Um, purple into the design and a little bit of red. So Michelle, it looks like it looks like most people with that, that are gonna have more people, it looks like about five to uh -huh. ten. Um, and then others is just um, themselves and their partners. Okay. Um, but I love what <laughs> Pam she she says um just her her husband her two dogs and andrew the cat well and i like andrew andrew sounds like a great cat <laughs> so that's good you know it's it's so difficult we've all been separate from family and friends and thanksgiving is so much about that but um just because it's going to be small doesn't mean you can't make it special so Hopefully that's what we're doing today is looking at some ways to make things just a little different, just a little more special. And maybe a couple green palms. That looks so pretty on camera, Michelle. That's beautiful. Oh, good. Good, good, good. You know, it's always interesting when we look at things under our lighting in here and it says, oh, this looks great. And then you watch the replay on camera. It's like, oh, that didn't translate on color very well. But good. I'm glad to see that we're getting a little little pop of color in there. We had someone mention um, just a few moments ago that mentioned that this would look good on your front door. Absolutely. So you are just thinking along the same lines that I am. You could use this as the backdrop for your uh, virtual Thanksgiving gathering. I have one very similar that's on the inside of my front door. So as you're going out, you can see it. And I just refresh the flowers in it. Um, occasionally, it's a little bit of fern over here. Um, ferns do really well, at least in our environment, because we have a lot of them. And then, uh, gosh, ranunculus have been super long lasting. Just every now and then I grab something and 
tuck a few blossoms in there to make it feel a little a little fresher. He does not want to stay there, so I would put a little glue dash right there and hold him exactly where I want him. But that was my, my Zoom backdrop, if you will, or my um, FaceTime backdrop, just something a little floral. Gillian. The vet um, obviously is a mom because she uses baby ear syringes to fill the tubes. I maybe. didn't know there was an ear syringe. I did not know there was such a thing myself. Maybe if you have a baby, you need an ear syringe. I was just going to say, Leanne, that's not in our wheelhouse. So, <laughs> so what that is, it has a curve, because we use those well, as well. It's a, it's a syringe, but the tip curves. It has a curved tip. Similar to this, but not as aggressive. Yeah. Oh, so okay. Yeah. Oh, so it's not like for a baby. Well, yeah, they are. We use them for a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So I just said every day we learn something new. Tulips never stop growing. Uh, and so now I know a baby ear syringe will be fine if I need a, a test tube filler. <laughs> oh gosh. It's actually used for their noses. Oh, I know what it is. It, mm, it's a snot sucker. It's that bulb. <laughs> I know those. And we don't need to know why I know those. Oh my. <laughs> Okay, back to flowers. Back to flowers. All right, we digress. But so the next thing I wanted to share with you is, uh, like I said, much like Leanne and, and David, it's just going to be my husband and me. But, but I'm used to setting the table for 12 people. I have an old Duncan Fife table that I put all the leaves in. It's 126 inches long. It's basically a bowling alley. And I decided, you know what? I'm gonna keep it long and I'm gonna go old school, just like something out of Downton Abbey and my husband's going to sit at one end and I'm going to sit at the other end and I'm going to have a big floral display in the middle and we'll each have our own place settings and our own chargers, salt and peppers and every piece of stemware I can find and just go fancy. I think that sounds so grand. Now, I, I could, love that idea. If I could just get a butler to come wait on us while we're doing that, it would be much more fun, but you know. So with that in mind, I wanted to create something that under a normal situation would be a little um, too much if I'm trying to sit across from someone, but the concept can be expanded into a longer um, tablescape. It can be shortened, it can be raised. So it's very flexible. So that's what I was after. So what I started with, and normally I would place my sticks in the foam and then build it, but I wanted to be able to move it and show you guys. So what I did was take a couple very substantial branches of curly willow and use those as my uprights, my supports. Then I took curly willow tips and put them nose to tail. So I get the little spindly pretty ends going both directions. And I've just bound them into little clusters, little bundles, and place them in between the branches. So right here, there was a natural Y, and I could place a section of those bound twigs in there to give me this armature, this structure, that I can then place into my containers. So I'm gonna grab those containers. They think your idea of the long table is perfect for social distancing. <laughs> Well, I hadn't actually thought of that, but yeah, that actually would work really well. If he's 12 feet away from me, yeah, it's fine. Except if I want a dinner roll, it's like, go long, here it comes. So you could do this in one container and, and place your uprights in the one container. I wasn't sure how big I wanted to make it. We got some beautiful product in today and I didn't know how tall it was. So I played around with it and decided to go with just these wooden boxes. They have a plastic liner and I've used a full brick of foam that I've cut into two sections. Um, they're very heavy, they're very substantial, but I could do multiples of these. I could do four or seven and just continue this construction all the way across, making like a trellis down the middle of the table. So for starters, I want to get these placed in and then get a little bit of moss on the top of them. 
Oh, I didn't check the microphone height. No, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to. It's not turned on. Okay. Oh, that's good. We'll right. use the other one. Very good. Well, I didn't want to make too much of a mess. So I'm going to take this and shove it just right down into the foam. And your height is good on camera. So you're good, good there, too. Hello. You're good. There you go. Here we are. You might have to do your knees, but okay. whatever. Get a little uh, workout in. Do a little quad workout down here. That's so. right. So, uh, I, like I said, I have a brick of foam in each, and then just a little bit of the sphagnum moss. I just want to help hide that rough e hi there, hide that rough edge of the box. I don't really need to hide all of the foam that's in here because I'm going to be placing um, floral materials down here and doing. I'll call it a pave. I'm going to do uh, parallel, mostly parallel placements of things and uh, give some interest in color down here, as well as some interest in color up here, and maybe something going this way. So we'll just, we'll just see how this all plays out. It all sounds fabulous in my head, and when I do my sketches, and then I get in here, it's like, oh, cameras, lights, this doesn't work. But, you know, you get to create and learn with me today. How's that sound? So a little shout out to everybody. Everyone's saying how much they're loving this. Let's see those hearts, people. Yeah, if you like it, share the love. They love it. Good, 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 good. All right, so I've got a little bit of my mechanics hidden down at the bottom. So now it's just a matter of adding some of my pretties in. So I want to start with some strong vertical placements to help give the structure a little more structure, I guess. Um, and these gorgeous darlings came in today. Aren't these amazing? This is half their stem length. Marisa said, they're gorgeous. Do you want them for live? And I said, yes. And she said, okay, and chopped half of them off because they were too big to fit on camera. So I'm going to slide that over to the side just a little bit. We've got hearts coming here. They love the um, background with the dream catcher, and now they're loving this too. So you're looking good on camera. Yay. Okay. Well, yay me. Yay. So it means I have a job tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what I did, I stripped all the foliage off except for the top portion and put an angled cut on the bottom of the stem to help keep that round stem from spinning. And then I'm just placing these down into that uh, oasis that's down there. So not only does this, woo, that's a toughie, give me some um, vertical movement, it also helps reinforce the structure that I've created. Yes, Marisa. So I'm notice, noticing you're stripping all of the foliage off of those. And someone's asking if those are protea. Um, but why are you taking all the leaves off? I'm taking all the leaves off because I really want uh, just that vertical uh, line to show. I don't want the fluffiness and the fussiness of the foliage per se, but I do like the, the tops. Kind of think of it like palm trees. I've got that nice clean trunk and then all the fun stuff's up top. So um, I could leave them on. There's, there's no reason that I would have to take them off. It's just a personal choice on my end. Yes, Leanne. Two things. Dinsy just said happy Thanksgiving and hello to everybody. Hi, Dinsy. Hi, Dinsy. And then Jennifer wants to know why do florists like to wear black? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'll tell you why I do because it really simplifies my dressing scheme in the morning. If the majority of what I have is black, then it's very straightforward. In my personal life, I wear a lot of other colors. Um, like orange? I was going to say like black and orange, but you know, go peeps, second game this weekend, beat the Huskies, yay. Uh, but you know, Marissa, how about you? I know you're a, a lover of black as well. Uh, it's easy and you can't, it doesn't show dirt. There you go. And it's just easy. I don't have to match anything. There you go. Yep, I like that. So I'm going to stop with those for a moment. That gives me a little bit more oomph up there. Um, then, look at these darlings. Oh, these still my heart. Look at those. Are those not delicious? Those burgundy roses. And they have these lovely, lovely long stems again. So I can do the same thing. I can come in and remove that foliage. 
because it's pretty much just in the way. Check for any damaged petals or things that just don't look absolutely fabulous. And then come in and feed, feed these down through so that I get a little more color. Oops. Well, he's about the same height as the other one. I should have checked that a little better. Don't want everything quite at the same level. I want a little bit of variety in my height. <laughs> Ira says, uh, as far as all of us wearing black, uh, because we like the color to be on our flowers, not on us. Hey, okay, I'm stealing that. I'm changing my answer. My answer is Ira's answer. So mm -hmm. yes, black does make an excellent backdrop for things. Um, it, if you look at flower coolers, they tend to be either white or black. And I think black makes the color pop more. Um, it's a little more sophisticated than white. It's not as bright, but it does certainly uh, make things pop a little bit more. I'm going to shorten him just a smidge. Now that PJ is loving this, and she's already jumping ahead and sees it at springtime with a nest at the top and little birds and bunnies in the bottom. There you go. Awesome. See, that's what I love so much about these lives is it's interactive. If I've given you something that sparks your creativity, you're already planning for the next holiday with it. I think that's fantastic. I love that. Love, love, love that. Tabitha, um, who recently became FDI certified. Yes, she is did. Watching us here live. So hi, Tabitha. Hi, Tabitha. Congratulations! Yes, thanks for joining us. We love it when you guys can take some time and pop into our flower world here in Portland. Yvette wants to know how do you become certified? Ah, so in Tabitha's case, she is FDI certified. So she has taken both our basic course and our advanced course. So that earns her uh, the right and the title of FDI certified. So she can put FDI after her name. Tabitha, correct me if I'm wrong, but did you not also just pass your CFD? I think you did. So She was getting ready to take it. I don't know if she actually took it yet. Okay. I couldn't remember if I saw that she was in the process of or had already done so. So that's where my little pea brain got stuck. Um, certification, you know, for some people it's a personal uh, quest. What I feel is that it tells people you're serious about your career, that you've made an investment in your education, and it lets you tell your customers that, that you are professionally trained. You, you've gone to school, you've learned the tips and tricks, and you know how to do it right, which, woo, come back here, flower, is um, really important, I think. Uh, Michelle, um, yes. how, uh, what is the height of your armature there, or so? Ish. <laughs> so 24 inches to the horizontal plane, and then the curly willow that's above it, maybe another 15 inches or so. Um, that's the nice thing. If you have a low hanging light fixture over your table, not necessarily a chandelier, but sometimes you have suspended lights, you could easily just shorten uh, the, um, the vertical curly willow placements so that it brings it down a little bit lower. Since I'm gonna be seated at the complete opposite end of the table, I can be looking either through this at my husband, which is how I plan to put it, or I could turn it and I could be on the right and he's on the left that way and just set it down to the side. So it gives you some options as far as where you place it and how tall you make it. Um, this is one of those things where there's really no wrong height, no wrong placement on things. And then Michelle, Tammy wants to know, uh -huh. uh, okay, if you were to add more boxes to this, uh -huh. would you connect the willow or make them separate arrangements? Great question. If I were doing this in a home setting, i.e. at my house, and I was going to march these down the whole table, I would connect the willow because I think you're going to get this beautiful um, floating feel all the way down the table. If I were doing this for an event, if I were trying to um, place these in uh, an environment where I need to do 25 of them, I might do them in twosies because I can carry the twosies together and then butt them up next to each other. 
and then maybe weave just a couple extra pieces of curly willow between them so that they feel like they're all one giant piece. But from a transportation standpoint, I think it would be a nightmare to try and do it connected. But on site, absolutely. Oh, these roses. Oh, be still my heart. I don't know if they read on camera as beautifully as they do in person, but they are just delicious. All right, so you guys all said do the, the more modern color palette. Okay, so now I'm going to bring in some of these gorgeous scabiosa and tuck, oops, got a little aggressive. Sorry, dude, chopped your little head off. Bring some of those in down low and a little bit higher just to get some different layers in here. Yes, Marisa. Um, so we're going a little off topic off Thanksgiving, but I have a couple people conversing about um, this online bouquets to carry course that we have. And yeah. people are saying like, what? I didn't know about this. What is it? Yeah, so awesome course. Oh my, if, if we do say so ourselves, uh, it is wonderful. It is a, a course dedicated to bouquets to carry, literally what Marisa said. Um, we have different styles of bouquets. We work with foam holders, we work with hand ties, we work with armatures. Um, it's just fantastic, the different techniques that you can learn in that course. Um, gosh, we've had it, it's been active for what, a couple months now, maybe? Oh, I think more than that, maybe, gosh. Four, five, six. Has it been four. that long? It's been four months, months maybe. Because we just finished the flowers to wear maybe four months ago. Oh, that's so, right. Yes. So the bouquets to carry has probably been not quite a year, maybe eight months. That's right. I was, I was getting confused on those. Correct. Um, it's a wonderful course. That in conjunction with the flowers to wear that uh, Leanne mentioned just that we've just completed. As we continue to add to this series, it's going to um, really make you a wedding expert. Anything you want to add to that, Leanne? You know, it's just been so much fun to see students create the designs in those classes. Um, it's got to be the most comprehensive, up-to-date and complete wedding program that we've ever offered and we've done wedding full specialists for years but we have totally updated and it has just been a blast to get that ready oh this protea <laughs> oh that is so pretty just a little extra pop of color they look like little fireworks to me i don't know i just think they're so fun so and I do have a question, maybe Leanne knows, because both Michelle and I were like, are these a certain variety of scabiosa? Because those came just single stem. Yeah. And I don't know anything about them. We need a flower farmer to answer that. I just said, I want most beautiful purple scabiosa, and that's what they said. Ugh. Well, they are fantastic. They are so pretty. Um, when Marisa and I were pulling the product. So you can see these are very much uh, round, very full and round as compared to your more traditional scabiosa that has a, a daisy cone-like center and then the, the collar of petals. Uh, these are gorgeous too. Uh, well, hey, it's in my hand. <laughs> Let's put it in. Um, oh, whoopsie, I just beheaded him. Bad, bad Michelle. Okay, we have a few, excuse me, a few people asking about the bouquets to carry course. Is that uh -huh. an online course and is it also in person? Currently, it is online only. Um, we are working on, as I said, getting more courses along that vein uh, to make our wedding floral specialist group of classes. And um, I know during during our break, when the school is closed for the holidays, we'll all be working on that new uh, new set of courses, new curriculum. And then, you know, we, we just don't know what's happening with the world as far as the classes, but we hope to be able to have that as a classroom course again as well. Um, it was typically a three-week course, just like our basic. So it, it um, we'll just have to see what the new year brings us as far as that goes. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Oh my gosh, I almost missed the billy balls. How could I do that? Oh, no, the jumbo one. Bridge still my heart. Look at those. Those are so pretty. 
So hopefully this looks good on the front side, y'all, because I can't really turn this one around to look at it. It looks great, and it shows so well on camera, and they want to see the whole thing, and I told them that that will happen tomorrow. We'll get a picture of it and get it posted yes. so that they can see everything. Yeah, we'll make sure that you can see all of the, the different layers that are in here. So speaking of pictures for tomorrow, and this is going to answer someone's question, um, so we're going to have to find a place to stage this tonight because I don't think personally I'm going to be able to move that by myself. Right. So how would you transport that? So if I were transporting this, I'm going to pick it up and carry it just like that. It's really quite portable. Is it light? Um, I would not call it light because I have a fully soaked brick of foam in each one. Hands. Well, <laughs> So, so you can put it onto a, a platter. Yep. Oh right. Go yes. that way. Yep. So you could do it on a platter so if you. Even if we have, have wimpy hands, it doesn't matter. Even if you have wimpy hands, you can do it. I just don't want to carry it by myself. Yeah. <laughs> we got that, Marisa. <laughs> but you are correct. That would be a challenge. Yeah. Um, I wish you could carry it up the stairs. Well, that's kind of I think you were probably going to go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so on a platter, if I had to transport them, like I was saying, for an event or multiples, I might stage them on a board or put a pair of them in a tote, like a plastic um, tote, like you get at Home Depot or something, so that you could easily carry them. Then it would make them very portable and very stable. They're they're very bottom heavy. Uh, they're not gonna they are not gonna tip over. That's for sure. Oh, I see my tassel grass in the corner. I almost forgot the other. There are so many fun things in here today. I can't even focus. So um, Michelle, I don't know how you're going to get this all done because you've got to do your table, and then I'm thinking I want you to help on my table. This is <laughs> that, does that fall into those other duties as assigned? Is I that where that goes? So. <laughs> and for the first time in my life, I'm actually going to do some cooking, and so how will I have time to do flowers too? Exactly. Well, yeah, you did. You have been doing quite a bit of cooking lately. You've expanded your skill set. I'm really, uh, I'm really impressed with you. I'm well, not that I wasn't before, but I'm quite surprised, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I've got a little bit of green down in there. I've basted those in there so I have a little more um, coverage and a little more color because I do want to pull into that uh, more contemporary runner that you all selected but there's no bling there's no bling in this oh they've been watching those and i said shh don't don't you have to wait so these were orange flame callas and they had they were twins they were conjoined twins basically but they arrived with um some spots on them so they weren't camera perfect but I just could not get past these roughly edges and these forms. So I took them outside and I spray painted them gold, kind of a, a mid gold that's between the two golds on the runner that you picked, good choice. Um, so it's really gonna help pull some of that sparkle up into the upper portion. Now, I did not, these are not in water and I wanted to be able to thread them through my armature now, callas are a, a fleshy flower, and they are going to hold up fairly well without water for the event. I would not do a, a waterless um, design with them and send this out for a customer or something like that, but for an event to last for the duration of Thanksgiving or something like that, it's more than, more than adequate. Plus, by spray painting them, they are kind of preserved in there. The, the stem portion that's down here, that fleshier part, is going to start to wilt a little bit, uh, dehydrate over time, but um, the top part that's painted is really quite sturdy. And I have no idea how this one's gonna look because I'm doing it backwards, but I think it needs to be more on the front so you guys can see that gold color. Michelle, this is fab. I was really excited when I looked at the color palette that we had coming in. It's like, oh, oh my gosh, I can't wait. That looks so great on camera and it, it shows does. really well. Good, 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 good. So I'm going to tuck a couple more in here. 
just to get a little more gilded action. Whoops, not Tim Loose. Now, if I were going to do this for an event, or if I was transporting it, okay, fine, you don't want to play well with others. If I was going to be transporting it to a different location, I would use some of the bind wire and secure those callas in place because I would not want them to shift um, since this is just going to be on my table at home. <laughs> uh, it's not really going anywhere. So I'm going to add a couple as vertical placements just to bring some of that sparkle from the table runner up into the verticals as well as the ones that are woven through on the top. I know there's foam there. There we go. And then I do have some tassel grass, just a little bit of that to tuck in to give us, you know, go big or go home, right? Uh, I just wanted a little more height. They decided they want a life-size version of this so they could get married under it. Oh my gosh, wouldn't this be gorgeous? You could totally do that. You could absolutely do that using the full height curly willow branches, not just the tips like I'm working with. You could absolutely recreate this as an arbor. Come on, guys. Do you know how long the calla lilies will last painted like that in water? Painted like that in water. I would think you'd be getting uh, at least the normal amount of time out of the callas. So maybe, maybe a week or so, because you aren't going to see them um, dehydrating or changing color, uh, I think you'd be inclined to leave them up and out longer. Um, Cause usually when flowers start to look nasty, I want to throw them out. And if, uh, if we've hidden some of that, under the makeup of spray paint, then um, we can enjoy them for longer. So you want to know how much weight that upper trellis can support and when would you have to stop adding flowers? I would say it's, I'm, I'm pushing on it peeps. It's pretty sturdy. I could, well, except for that one that just does not want to stay in place. So we're just going to bind you right in there. Um, I would be comfortable adding more uh, woven flowers or more hanging flowers from it um, because everything except for the callas is inserted into the foam it's helped give some rigidity to the um, the upright placements of curly willow um, and you could you could bring your tassel grass out to the side as well if you wanted to give it a little more fluffy I don't like that now that I said that Taking it back out. Uh -huh. Nah, it didn't work. Mm -mm. Sounded yeah. good in theory, didn't work in application. But isn't that joyful when you can just move it and say, oh, never mind. Never mind, I'm gonna move it, absolutely. So I'm going to move this back behind, she says. <laughs> so I just got through telling you how easy it was to move. Actually, I'm gonna move it to the side because I can't really turn around with it right at the moment. But I'll just slide him over to the side that because even when we don't have a reduced number of people coming for Thanksgiving, I always like to have something personal for people. Um, I stock up on those Ziploc containers that you can take home leftovers in, and I have enough that I can send everybody home with little mashed potatoes, a little bit of stuffing or dressing because you have to make both, right? Because stuffing comes out of the bird and dressing doesn't because people, you know, have issues about food and birds, whatever. Anyhow, uh, but I like to send everybody home with a little leftovers tray that they can have to watch football games with the next day and so forth. But I also like for them to have something personal at their table uh, excuse me, at their place at the table. So I like to do little personal place setting flowers. Sometimes they're in um, little, I did little footed urns one time because I found some at market that were just adorable. Excuse me, sometimes they've been pumpkins. Uh, just depends on what's available. So I've got my little runner out here. And I'm gonna slide it off to the side. And, uh, when I went to get my little pumpkins this time, I 
wasn't paying attention and I waited too long. And everything has flipped to Christmas. So there were no little pumpkins, but I had gourds on my front porch. So the difference is a gourd is really hard, like wood, and the pumpkin is much softer, like a Jack B. Little or the Baby Boos, those little ones, couldn't find any. So I had to get creative. And I found these darling little gourds. I mean, it's rock hard, people. Normally, what I would do to hollow these out is I would get a one and a half inch cookie cutter, just a cylindrical cookie cutter that I could then set on top of my pumpkin and then with a, a little board or a cutting board on top of it, take my hammer and pound into it and it goes bump, bump, bump and goes right down in and you cut it out like a cookie and you have this wonderful, excuse me, wonderful hole in your pumpkin. I can't do that on a gourd, it wouldn't let me. So, power tools, <laughs> love, love my drills, can't help it. Uh, so, instead of using that one and a half inch cookie cutter, what I have on here is a one and a half inch hole saw. So this would be something you would use maybe to cut a hole through a door so you could put a lock in it. Isn't that what they use when they cut holes in desks for the computer cords and stuff? Exactly. Same okay. thing. And they come in different sizes. Mine was a whole set, but the one and a half inch was exactly the same diameter as my cookie cutter. So we all need one of those now. We all need one of these. So bear with me for a nanosecond. I can take that and drill into my cord. And I need our workers' cost policy covers them too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we used these drills the uh, day before yesterday for a project in the classroom, and I'm thinking that battery is just about gone. Probably. So, so we may move on. Yeah, we're going to move on. So that's what I would do to um, put the hole in my pumpkin because that particular size is perfect to hold the tea light. Oh. Now these happen to be little LED tea lights that I got at the store that sells everything for a dollar. And they are actually quite nice. They come with a battery and they have a flickering flame. And I've hollowed out my gourd. I used, so I've been in the kitchen. I had a, a biscuit cutter and now I have a melon baller. So those of you from the 60s and beyond know that this is for scooping out cantaloupe or watermelon and making perfectly round little melon balls. So now I need to buy one of those two. Now I need one of those two, I'm sorry. But it is just the perfect size to get in and clean all the seeds and the very small amount of pulp. Unlike a pumpkin that's soft in the middle, this pretty much just has the mesh and the seeds in it. But this cleans it out perfectly. I have a little chunk of Oasis foam in there that's dry. I don't need to soak it because all it's doing is holding up my my little pumpkins, or excuse me, my little tea lights in my pumpkins. I'm actually glad that wouldn't drill all the way through today because it makes a mess. <laughs> it's very messy. And then you can also put a little bit of soaked floral foam into the center of the pumpkins and do a little arrangement for it. So this is what will be at my place setting and at my husband's. We'll each have our own little pumpkins. But I'm not done with them because there's no bling and we have to have bling. So what I like to do is I have some small salau leaves and a metallic sharpie marker and I'm just going to write our names on it. Oh. This is just, oh my God. I know. You I'm, are setting the bar high. I'm so Martha Stewart sometimes, I just can't help myself. <laughs> but then I'm just a little glue dash, actually just a piece of a glue dash. Scissors. Oh, oh, I found it. There we go. Hiding. They were in stealth mode. So I'm cutting that glue dash in half. Oh, stick into my finger and then just tacking that on the back of the leaf pulling off that little paper bit and then finding a nice little spot where it will show 
then I can just tack that on the side of my pumpkin. Just in case you forget who you're eating with that day? Could happen. Well, with just the two of us, it might be a little excessive, but it's always nice when we have multiple people because I like to break up couples, not in the literal sense. I like to maybe, <laughs> let me rephrase that. I like to seat couples separately because I think we have much more interesting conversations when you're not sitting right next to the person you sit next to for every other meal that you eat. So I always have assigned seating. So if you get invited to my house for a party, you'll have assigned seating. But um, I would do one for myself as well. And then these would just be sitting at our place settings. And in the old world, if everybody were coming over, then I stack up all those little Ziploc containers, the disposable ones. I put them in a giant corsage bag and tie the top off and then when they're ready to leave I hand them their food and I hand them their pumpkin and I say happy Thanksgiving and go home because <laughs> it's time to watch football <laughs> at our house that's how it goes so I'm going to bring back the um, the big piece and plop it in the center here whoops launched my pumpkin any questions from anybody out there I do have a, a question oh um, fire away yes in regards to your um, arrangement that you made um, with the armature out of curly willow mm -hmm. so um Vega who's in Iceland yes yes so um she can't get her hands on curly willow I would love to work with it because they won't Oops. import it out there oh Is there anything that you suggest that may be similar to or something else that she could use to make an armature you betcha um any twig or branch birch branches would be great bega i apologize i'm not really familiar with the uh, flora of um iceland but um any i'm just gonna talk to you guys through here for a minute um any branches that have a little bit of structure birch branches would work well um if you had um lilac tree or something like that or um even something that's very leafy you could um you could strip the foliage off and use that as well so uh, it doesn't have to be curly willow we use curly willow all the time here because it literally grows like a weed in our environment but um, yeah, any kind of any kind of branch would be just fine. I love the way you can move those around and just shift them, and it changes the whole look as you were fussing with them. I love that. Yeah. So this is uh, this is my Thanksgiving, and. Um, I'm glad I got to share a little bit of it with you. I'm glad you all got to give me some input as to what I'll be working with this year. But um, part of my thanks is thanking you again for joining us because if you don't show up, we're just talking to each other and that's not a whole lot of fun. But um, please share this if you know someone who might enjoy a couple tips and tricks and techniques for their Thanksgiving table this year. And uh, I'd like to see what you create. So if anything here has inspired you, let me see a picture of it. Tag Floral Design Institute, hashtag Floral Design Institute when you make your post. And that way all of us can see what you created and feel like we shared our Thanksgiving with you as well. If we have no other questions, I would say have a wonderful week and do something you love. Bye everybody. <laughs>